Lou here. Now, I have seen a lot of anime. According to my My Anime List page, I've seen about 130 anime. I mean, yeah, it is nothing compared to other people who love anime. But hey, that's still a lot. One anime that's been suggested to me, but I have never really gotten around to it, was JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. Today, that changes. Just like my Evangelion video earlier this year, I watched everything JoJo's related that I could find. Uh, except two manga because I'm a little lazy and this was a lot to review, so please cut me some slack. But once six, seven, and eight get their respected anime, I'll review them separately. The year is 1888 and Dio Brando was adopted seven years ago by George Joestar because he thought Dio's father saved his life or something. Since Dio is an orphan, being a young teenager in England since that's the thing to do, that's why he's adopted. However, Jonathan Joestar, or Jojo, finds out that Dio is an evil sack of shit. I mean, the guy's first introduction is kicking a dog, so that just tells you Dio is an evil motherfucker. It's up to Jonathan to make himself strong enough to defeat Dio, who's pretty much as evil as they come. Eventually though, Dio is turned into a vampire in pursuit of power, and so Jonathan's gotta use his new ability called Hamon, or Ripple, to defeat him because it's like the only thing that kills vampires because the plot kind of demands it. I won't spoil much for anyone who's like new to this, like I am, but y'all, let me tell you this story is awesome. I don't know if many of you know this, but I love vampires. Interview with a Vampire, Castlevania, True Blood, and even Twilight to some extent are all vampires that I absolutely love. So already the series drew me in the minute I heard vampires in a sentence in this series. I legitimately loved this though. Jonathan is such a sweet but kind of stupid boy. Well, compared to the other Joes, he may not be the best, but I absolutely adore him with all my heart. Also, Arena and Jonathan is an OTP for the ages, thank you very much. Not only is Jonathan a great first protagonist, but his companions are too. Will Zeppeli is a wonderful character and hey, I always get to appreciate the Italians since I'm like a quarter of it myself. Speedwagon is also best bro. For a guy who almost tried to kill Jonathan once, he is a bro until the very end. Not only are the characters a delight, but the absolute best part is the animation, action, and storytelling. The story basically says, fuck how the human body works and physics, this is just fun, ignore it. And I love it. Watching these characters make poses that literally look like someone went crazy with a figma is just an absolute delight and just the absolute most ridiculous thing of the story is just, it's just something I don't have words for. Do I have anything to compare it to? Um, imagine the entertaining badassery of John Wick with purple glitter and 60s to 80s music references slapped onto it, and that's just how ridiculously amazing JoJo's is. Not gonna lie though, the references already killed me with characters like Zeppeli and Ton Petty. Though this arc was basically like a horror movie from how legitimately terrifying the vampires and zombies are in this arc, like, I'm easily disgusted by throat gore and eye gore, so like, JoJo's somehow managed to tap into my greatest fears too. Thanks, JoJo's. I mean, I don't know if the intention was to be a horror story in the beginning, but it damn works out well considering how many moments are legitimately creepy or gross like a horror movie. Overall, part one, absolutely amazing. I love it. As the original adaptation for Phantom Blood is lost media because Araki hated it so much that he doesn't want the public to see this movie, good reason because this movie made a lot of weird choices and completely left out Speedwagon from what accounts say. Luckily, the first 20 minutes or so are available online with no voice acting or background music. I mean, watching part 1's anime helped piece things together for me. I. I don't really like this movie. I feel like this movie doesn't really understand what makes JoJo so great and thinks it's just berserk with everyone named after 60s to 80s bands and musicians. JoJo's is a very special series. It's basically this really exciting action movie, but also literally a walking meme and it fully knows what it is. I mean, would you take a story seriously with characters named Steely Dan? I definitely wouldn't. 
From interviews I read, Araki does things in JoJo's because it's fun, and that's what an anime for JoJo's should be. Not some overly melodramatic, edgy movie, because that's honestly pretty lame for JoJo's. Also, removing Speedwagon is an unforgivable sin to this world. Oh my gosh, this fucking arc. It has been a very long time since an anime legitimately managed to put a goofy smile on my face and just put me on an over-the-top roller coaster. This arc is my absolute favorite for sure, hands down. Joseph is immediately my favorite Joe in the series, even all the way to part 3, and is the world's greatest himbo on this planet. He is so fucking stupid, handsome, charming, and badass that I can't help but love him with every ounce of my heart. Not only that, but the villains are legitimately a terrifying threat. They're basically immortal human-like creatures who can create vampires and basically can't fucking die if they have a very specific red stone in combination with a special mask they make. They're called the Pillar Men, and I think they're my favorite. Cars in particular being my favorite because he's such a fucking asshole who plays it real dirty, that's for sure. Though Wamu was easily my second favorite because he actually seemed like he would have been a really nice guy if he was just in the right crowd. Though ACDC is a rude man and he's just really gross. The high octane action and plot twist legitimately had my jaw chopping and the second I heard this... I was like, no, and watch the next episode because I couldn't wait. I would also like to say that Lisa Lisa is a badass lady. Oh my gosh. She was just such a cool character and I really liked her, but Caesar, my boy, Caesar is easily my favorite companion too. I love me some flirty, confident characters and Caesar is easily one of them. I guess you could say I had a major crush on Caesar, eh? Eh? Overall though, this part was just absolutely amazing. Like JoJo's part two is just easily ranks as one of my favorite anime of all time from how incredibly amazing it was. If you want to know how absolutely badass and awesome part two is, all you need to see is the opening and it tells you everything. The only thing I didn't care for is Hamon because I don't really care for Hamon too much as a power in this show because like, I don't really get it. Is it like a breathing technique that connects you with the sun's rays thus creating some kind of strange magnetic force? I know Zeppeli explains it in part one, but even then I couldn't really grasp it there. Honestly though, 10 out of 10, best arc in my book, just non-stop amazingness. I will admit, at first, I thought Jotaro was a complete asswipe. Not to a point where I don't like him, because every JoJo's character is so ridiculous, regardless of their actions, that it's impossible to truly dislike a character. But just that I did want to smack him for being mean to Holly, because she's an amazing lady. Honestly, Holly wins best anime mom to me, because she is such a good mom to Jotaro, and almost kind of doesn't deserve her. I mean, I know he does care, but listen to Grandpa Joseph and lay off the sass, Jotaro. I gotta say, I much prefer stands over Hamon in this story. Wanna know what a stan is? Basically, it works almost exactly like a persona in the Persona games. Only instead of historical figures like William Kidd or fictional characters like Robin Hood, it's basically quite literally a manifestation of your soul or something like that in a physical form. So like, when your stand gets hurt, so do you. And I like that a lot better than breathing electricity or whatever Hamon was. Though you do catch Joseph using it a little bit here and there. And he's technically the only Hamon user in this arc. Also his stand of Hermit Purple is basically a manifestation of his Hamon. Anyway, your boy Dio is back and he's here to be a little bitch, I see. 
He stole Jonathan's body and somehow managed to preserve it for a hundred years with his own head in the bottom of the ocean. How? Well, first of all, it's JoJo's, don't question it, and second, there was a second compartment in the coffin that Arena was floating in with the baby, and it's just, when they found Arena, she clearly didn't want to come with the coffin, so the coffin just sunk to the bottom of the ocean with the second compartment having Dio inside in there. There you go. And anyway, who cares? It's JoJo's. Don't question logic in a series where a man can literally be decapitated and still live. I really liked this arc a lot, though. Honestly, part two will always be my favorite here, but part three is really damn good. The action and story is just so entertaining, and Jean-Pierre is easily my favorite character in this arc. Also, his stand of Silver Chariot is my favorite, too. He just looks super cool, though I will give it to Star Platinum, because that name is just really cool. While yes, this arc does create a lot of plot holes and there is some potential filler, not as bad as part 6 from what I've heard. Remember that this is JoJo's and the whole point of JoJo's is not to question it because this is a story written for fun and not to be super serious and gritty. Overall, I really like part 3. Yes, I didn't like Iggy all that much and it's definitely got its flaws. Like, there is a lot of filler that wasn't really needed at all, and gross-out humor that often felt maybe a smidge out of place. And I'm saying that as someone who loved Red and Stimpy as a kid, but overall, I liked part 3. It was a lot of fun, and I didn't actually mind the filler all that much. I think it's really damn good. Easily a 9 out of 10 still from me, even with the flaws it has. Guys, I fucking hated this OVA so much. Like, I legit don't think I would have been a fan of JoJo's if I got into the story through these boring ass OVAs. I've seen adaptations that legitimately don't understand the source material before. I'm looking at you, Full Metal Alchemist 2003, but this is just yikes. I've seen boring anime before as well, and honestly, if this video wasn't about me pushing through and watching everything JoJo's, I legit would have dropped it because this was so boring that it was painful to watch. The color palette was non-existent, the art style is awful, there's extremely strange choices in the story, and even the Japanese voice acting itself was pretty boring. I have never been so disappointed hearing Star Platinum's aura in my life. I will give it some positives though, okay? I'm fine with some filler that was left out because I didn't really care for Death 13 and other filler stands like that all that much, but leaving out the Oingo Boingo brothers and the ridiculousness of Wheel of Fortune is a sin. Another positive I will give is the animation itself was pretty fluid and fight scenes were done well actually and the english dub solely because it is so awful that it's legitimately hilarious maybe if this was an adaptation of a really serious manga like fist of the north star or violence jack then i think this would have actually been pretty good but because it's jojo's a series that needs to balance the over-the-top high risks with genuinely funny moments then it doesn't work it could just be me who loves JoJo's when it embraces that it's really silly, but trying to make JoJo's really serious like Berserk is just stupid to me. Overall, this anime was boring and I'm big disappointed. Luckily, I know there will be no other JoJo's anime like this again. Honestly, I'm surprised Araki approved of these OVAs but hated the Phantom Bloods movie. Then again, it could be that Phantom Blood's movie is lost because it reminds him of these shitty OVAs. Strap in your boots, folks. It's time to talk about references. Now, keep in mind that I was born in 1997, so there were a lot of references I didn't know because I'm young and dumb. So I had some external help in getting who and what the references were. Keep in mind, some stuff will be left out because this video would likely go on forever. So I'm only naming, like, the super important stuff. Part 1. Dio's first name comes from the heavy metal band Dio, while his last name Brando is likely a reference for the actor Marlon Brando, who is a highly respected actor because he's very good. 
Robert E.O. Speedwagon's name is a reference to the rock band R.E.O. Speedwagon. The Zabelli family is named after the rock band Led Zeppelin. Tom Petty is named after singer Tom Petty. Dire and Straitso are named after the rock band Dire Straits. Poco's name is a reference to the band Poco. Wang Chan's name is inspired by pop group Wang Chung. Tarkus is named after an album by Emerson Lake and Palmer. Bruford is named after the former drummer of Yes, who do the ending song Roundabout. Amazing song, by the way. Doobie is named after the Doobie Brothers. Father Styx is named after the band Styx. And Jonathan and Dio were inspired by Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger, which explains their bada bodies. Part 2! Lisa Lisa is named after the band Lisa Lisa and the Colt Jam. Lodgins and Messina are named after musicians Kenny Lodgins and Jim Messina. Susie Q is named after a musician named Susie Quattro and a song called Suzy Q. The Pillarmen are named after famous bands, so Cars, Wham, ACDC, and Santana. Very nice, Susie Chan is a reference to a band called Ambrosia. Redstone of Asia is named after a song by the band Steely Dan. And in the manga, Joseph is listening to the Beatles on a Walkman in the final chapter. Part 3! Part 3 takes place in Egypt because the band Dio has a song called Egypt. Walk Like an Egyptian is used as the ending song because, get it? Egypt! Mohamed Abdel's name is a reference to the singer Paula Abdul. Jean-Pierre Polnareff is named after French musician Michael Polnareff and actor Jean-Paul Belmondo. That pervert monkey pedo thing with the strength tarot card stand is named Forever after an album by Wu-Tang Clan. In the manga, when Joseph is using Hermit Purple on the TV to try and find Dio, one of the shows is just the cover of a Tom Petty album and a commercial for MTV in the 80s. Whole Horse is named after the band Hall & Oates. Nina is named after the German singer Nina, though I am disappointed by the lack of 99 red balloons. The Wheel of Fortune stand is named ZZ after the band ZZ Top. Steely Dan is named after the band Steely Dan, though his name is often censored in manga licensing here in the US as to avoid copyright issues. The chickens Abdul was pretending to raise on the island were named Prince, Michael, and Lionel, who are all musicians. The submarine the Crusaders take to get to Egypt is a yellow submarine, which is a reference to the Beatles song, Yellow Submarine. Iggy is named after the band Iggy Pop. Oingo and Boingo are named after the band Oingo Boingo. Fun fact, Oingo Boingo's lead singer, Danny Elfman, did the music for Nightmare Before Christmas. Mariah is named after Mariah Carey. The Darby Brothers are a reference to the singer Terrence Trent Darby. Pet Shop is named after the pop group The Pet Shop Boys. Kenny G is after musician of the same name. Vanilla Ice is named after a rapper of the same name. Suzy Q's butler is Roses after the band Guns N' Roses. When Jotaro is quizzing Joseph to make sure Dio didn't possess him, he asks who sang Eat It, where he responds Al Yankovic. In the manga, Joseph listens to Get Back from the Beatles, which many think is where the name Jojo comes from, but has yet to be confirmed. Dio's move Roda Roda was inspired by the anime Kinikuma. And that's it for part one of this video! That's right guys, there is so much JoJo's that I have to divide it into two parts because, well, I need my sanity and this video would take me five years to edit if I did all the parts at once. Alright, so be sure to let me know down below how you like the review and in case I missed anything so I can include it in part two. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! And if any old or new subs would like to help support the channel in any way, then feel free to visit my Ko-fi page down below in the description, along with my social media tabs. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe want to talk about anime or something, then I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!